Good day, Mr. Zikri, lecturer for Economic and Business Landscape Analysis. My name is Mohamed Dani Arozi, and I will be presenting my analysis about green financing and sustainable investment in Indonesia and the role of financial institutions. Okay, before we talk about green finance and sustainable investment, we have to know what is the cause and the story how green finance came into the public. That is the phenomenon known widely as global warming. As the time goes, the population is growing fastly compared to the last centuries, as we can see in the graph. The betterment of technologies and social issues like human rights play a major role to give the people a better life quality. Population rise mainly can be seen with these two factors. Those are birth rates and death rates. The increase in birth rates come from the advancement of technologies, especially in the medical sectors, which can help secure the, the delivery of births and reduce the risk of failure. Advancement in food and logistics sectors may help increasing the population too, as people have more easier effort to acquire their primary needs. And also social and cultural factors play a part too, such as having many children is seen as fulfillment of social expectations. On the other hand, the decrease in death rates as the cause of population population rise come from the better understanding of what the people need compared to the last centuries, like medical advancement, easier to get food and water, and the understanding of nutrition that is needed in the food, and many other technologies that help the survivability. Other factors like fewer international conflicts, like world wars, compared to before, uh, make nowadays a rel relatively peaceful times. Hence, the death rate is decreasing as compared to before. Now, what happened when the global population is growing fastly? Energy consumption will increase to power their everyday lives, like their homes, transportations, and also industries. Urban areas will also expand to cater the area of, for people to live in, which in turn cause deforestation as natural areas are converted into habitable place for the people. Expansion of agriculture, such as livestock production, which produce manure and animal waste that may release methane, and also waste generations from household waste to industrial waste that is increasing. Those activities emit greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, into the atmosphere and cause global warming as we know it. Now, global warming is a condition where the long-term increase of Earth's surface temperature due to human activities, primarily burning fossil fuels, that release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which then trap heat into the sun, uh, from the sun and cause the rise in global temperature. It can be seen in the graph that the global temperature is rising along with the rise of the population. Global warming has several bad impacts globally, such as climate change, and rise in temperature, which then melts the ice caps and glaciers in the polar and mountainous regions, leading to sea level rise, which then pose risk for coastal communities and marine ecosystems, such as flooding, erosions, and rise in ocean acidity. Change in precip precipitation patterns also lead to frequent extreme weather, such as storms and droughts so it can cause biodiversity loss in the ecosystem because of the change in the pattern and also health risks for the public from diseases related to weather, such as heat stroke and other diseases that caused by viruses that was brought from heavy rainfall. Now that we have known the cause and effect of global warming and climate change, we as the residents of the world need to recognize, recognize more seriously about these issues. It is an alarming issue that needs to be handled correctly and requires a collective efforts and collaboration internationally, so we and our descendants can continue to live in the world. The world countries have joined in the United Nations and held international conventions and treaties and made some progress regarding the efforts to tackle global warming and climate changes. From the first international climate program in 1980, which established World Climate Research Program and Boost Climate Science, the creation of Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or IPCC that was set up by the United Nations in 1988 to publish reports about up-to-date current state of climate change science. 
Rio Earth Summit in 1992, where United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or UNFCCC, was signed by 166 countries' participants. Paris Agreement in 2015, where every country in the world have agreed to a goal of limiting global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius in the centuries, and finally, European Green Deal in the late 2019, where European Council aimed to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050, and followed by the United States and China to aim net zero emissions by 2016. 2016. Back to Paris Agreement. The agreement emphasized on nationally determined contributions, or NDCs, for each country participants to set their own targets and strategies to reduce greenhouse gases emissions, such as the implementation of carbon pricing, where the country put a price on carbon emissions, which encourage industries to reduce their emissions. Renewable energy standards and incentives that is established by countries to set a limit for high carbon emissions industries to be more environmentally friendly and to promote adoption of renewable energy technologies with incentives. Tying regulations regarding emissions and energy efficiency also have been set to put more control for carbon emissions activity, such as industry, vehicle usage, and building standards that promote energy efficiency, and also regulations about nature protections and waste management that regulates activities that directly impact the nature, such as deforestation, land use management, and how waste is handled to be reduced to, to reduce the damage to the nature. Now we are going to talk about Indonesia, the conditions of Indonesia, and how Indonesia plans to tackle the issue of global warming and climate change. Indonesia is the fourth most populated country in the world as of 2022, with 275.7 million lives following the trend to the global population growth with the rise of population industrialization also rise steadily throughout the years, except for maybe 2020 and 2021 due to COVID-19 pandemic. To meet the rising of people's demand of goods and which then rise risen the carbon emissions, thus contributing to the global warming. Indonesia, as part of United Nations member and significantly feeling the impacts of global warming and climate changes, has been actively engaged in efforts to handle the issues such as natural conservation and restoration, where Indonesia's government has implemented a regulation to address the environmental damages that was caused by businesses and industrialization, such as deforestation and pit and restoration. Renewable energy development, where renewable energy such as solar, wind, hydro, and geothermal energy projects are encouraged to be implemented. Coastal ecosystem conservation, where Indonesia has taken initiatives to conserve and restore mangroves, seagrasses, and marine biology to mitigate the impact of sea level rise. Sustainable agriculture practices, where agricultural techniques that are more sustainable is promoted, such as agroforestry and sustainable land management, and also climate smart agricultural techniques. And lastly, national, nationally determined contributions, or NDCs, where Indonesia set its target and strategies to reduce carbon emissions. Under the Paris Agreement in 2015, the implementation of NDCs require collective and collaborative efforts between various sides, such as governments, private sectors, civil society, and even international organizations as partners. Now we are going to talk about green finance in Indonesia, the definition of it, the example, and the role of financial institution in green finance and sustainable investment. With the economy growing, financial institutions like banks, financing companies, and insurance companies play a major role in the economy by providing various financial services and products that allow capital to be evenly distributed to various areas that, need it, that needs it. The general role of financial institutions are intermediation, where they act as intermediaries between depositors and borrowers, mobilizing savings through deposits from customers 
and give loans to debtors, which leads to facilities, facility, facilitation of investments and economic growth. Allocating capital, where financial institutions provide loans and credit to individuals and businesses, supporting productive entrepreneurship and innovation activities. Payment system, where they facilitate smooth functioning payment system, which enables individuals and businesses to make transactions efficiently. Monetary policy transmissions for central banks to control the money supply and interest rates to manage inflation and price stability. Risk management, such as providing of insurance products that protect individuals and businesses from unexpected loss. Financial stability and regulation, where they comply to regulatory requirements that were set by the government to ensure the integrity and stability of financial system. And lastly, economic development and growth, where they provide financing for projects which in turn contributing to overall economic growth and prosperity. One of the efforts of Indonesia to tackle the global warming and climate change issue is green financing and sustainable investment. What are they? Green finance is the financial products, services, and investment practices that aims to support environmentally sustainable and socially res responsible projects and business to promote the transition to low carbon and sustainable economy by allocating capital towards activities that have positive impacts to the environment, which then the government and businesses may reach the sustainable development target that needs to be achieved. Example of green finance products are like uh, green loans. Uh, these special loans are targeted to finance projects that are environmentally friendly, such as renewable energy pro projects and clean transportations with special terms and conditions. It incentivizing debtors to invest in sustainable projects. Green bonds are debt instruments issued by government and corporations to finance green projects, which the proceeds uh, from green bonds issuance are targeted for sustainable projects. Renewable energy funds. It's, it is a pool of money funds from investors, which then allocated to renewable energy projects such as solar power plants, wind farms, biomass facilities, and hydropower projects. Sustainable mutual funds and uh, exchange traded funds or ETFs. Uh, it is the mutual funds and ETFs that funds the companies that meet certain uh, ESG criteria. Green infrastructure projects involve investment in sustainable infrastructure projects such as waste management facilities, public transportations, and water treatment that aims to reduce carbon emissions. Impact investing is where an investment is focused on projects that is addressed to social and environment challenges such as access to clean water, affordable housing, and sustainable agriculture. Green real estate investment is involved in investment in energy efficient and environmentally friendly houses and properties that use green materials and renewable energy installations. And lastly, climate funds. It is an investment focused on climate change mitigation. Now that we have talked about general knowledge of financial institutions and green economy, we are going to talk about the role of financial institutions in green economy. So aside from their initial roles, as one of the core body in, uh, the, in a country, financial institutions play a crucial role to promote green finance and sustainable investments. They act as intermediaries between investors and sustainable projects, thus contributing to the country's transition to low carbon economy. Some of financial institutions' role on green finance are providing green financing. As we have talked before, green finance, such as green loans, green bonds, and green mortgage, and other financing that targeted sustainable projects uh, aside for that, incorporating environmental criteria where they assess uh, investments before they make investing decisions. Promoting sustainability standards, financial institutions may implement sustainability standards that were set by regulators to contribute to the national targets of reducing carbon emissions. Capacity building and awareness, where 
the financial institution build capacity and raise awareness about green finance and sustainable investment to the stakeholders, namely their employees, clients, and also the, the people with conducting training programs, workshop, and also campaigns, monitoring and reporting, where financial institution must track the progress of sustainability targets and disclose the relevant information relevant information about environmental to be accountable and help investors and stakeholders to make an informed decisions. As a part of Paris Agreement, a member of United Nations, Indonesia already recognized the global warming issue, has implemented several NDCs such as transitioning the economy to a more sustainable and low carbon economy, which is a green finance. The government, or uh, specifically OJK, has already promoted green finance by issuing regulations on sustainable finance that require banks to integrate ESG or environmental, so, uh, social, and governance factors into their banking practice. Indonesia, as a prominent player in the green market, green bond market, has growing numbers of green bond issuance, mystically, domestically and internationally to raise funds for sustainable projects. Many financial institutions, mainly banks, have already incorporated sustainable banking practice, such as uh, developing green finance products to align their business strategy with sustainable development programs. Collaboration and partnership between financial institutions, government, and international organizations to drive green finance in Indonesia, such as Sustainable Banking Network and Partnership for Indonesia Sustainable Agriculture, and also financial institutions uh, also provide funding to renewable energy projects to help their development and growth. And lastly, with the sustainable standard set by the regulators, Indonesian companies and financial institutions also made sustainability report as a compliance to regulations. This was aimed for data transparency and availability for investors and stakeholders to make informed decisions. Now that we have known the roles of financial institutions in green finance, here are some uh, examples of Indonesian financial institutions and their green finance products. Bank Mandiri, as one of the largest banks in the Indonesia dedicated green financing unit, that offers green loans and renewable energy investment. They also provide advisory services for green project development. BNE has established green financing program, which is green loan to support sustainable projects. BRE implemented sustainable financing program to support sustainable projects and even reaching out to micro, small, and medium-sized sustainable enterprises. BTN offers green mortgages for home buyers who want to purchase energy efficient home and properties. Bank CIMB Niaga has launched CIMB Niaga Green Program, which offers green loan for sustainable projects and also provide advisory services to develop sustainable projects and also navigate regulatory requirements. For the non-bank financial institutions, there are PT uh, SME Persero, which is a financing company that provides funding to sustainable infrastructure development, such as public transportation system and other green infrastructure projects. Insurance companies such as Manulak Indonesia has committed to responsible investing that considers ESG factors in its investment decisions. AXA Mandiri offers green bonds, sustainable funds, and social uh, responsible investment products and Prudential actively assess the ESG performance of potential investment targets and seek out opportunities to invest in sustainable projects. Now that we have explained about the roles of financial institutions on green finance in Indonesia, we can summarize the challenges and solutions for green finance in Indonesia. The challenges are limited awareness and knowledge. Uh, so among the market participants, including business, investors and general public, they are not uh, familiar with the concept of green financing. And people are more prudent when it comes to investing in their money. So they do not want to invest in things that they have not understand yet. 
lack of policy and regulatory framework, the current policy needs further enhancement to, for, to provide clear guidelines, standards, and incentives for green finance initiatives. Limited access to green financing, particularly for small sustainable business and projects that badly need funding and limited expertise in assessment by, by financial institutions. An accurate and reliable data, data on environmental and sustainable performance are essentials for making investment decisions, so data availability and transparency still need to be further improved. Green projects often face uh, perceived or actual risk due to technological uncertainties, policy changes, and market volatility. So the mechanism of risk perception and mitigation by financial institution is still lacking. Green technologies and projects have higher upfront costs compared to the conventional. So that may have caused a threat too. And lastly, incorporating ESG factors into financial decision making is still relatively limited in Indonesia. Here are some recommendations to improve green finance in Indonesia, such as strengthen the policy and regulatory framework regarding green finance to provide clearer guidelines, such as establishing more concrete, sustainable financial regulations, uh, disclosure requirements, tax incentive, and green investment criteria. Raising awareness and understanding about green finance among financial institutions, business, uh, investors, and general public, such as conducting education and training, workshop, and also campaigns. Encouraging collaboration between government, financial institutions, businesses, and the people to establish a platform to hold a dialogue, sharing best practices and knowledge exchanges. Developing specialist financial products to improve the existing green products. Improving access to finance, especially uh, to small and medium-sized enterprises who engage in sustainable activities. Developing better risk assessment methods and risk mitigation mechanism specifically to green projects to help address the concern and attract more investors. Improving data availability, quality, and transparency regarding ESG factors by establishing improved standards for sustainability reports. Uh, integrating the concept of green finance and sustainable investment into academic curriculum to cultivate new generations of knowledgeable professionals in sustainable finance, finance practices. And I think that's all for me. And here are some citations from my sources of my analysis. Yeah, I think that's all for me and my analysis. Uh, I hope uh, it, it works well for you and thank you for your time.